we are now open for questions. questions. If, you, if you have anything to ask to the director of the group, you are open for it. You can ask. At max, at max, we will be taking five questions since we are running out of time. Thank you. Uh, thank you for this very, very powerful uh, movie. Uh, and uh, I mean, uh, in the end, we were all unsettled as you. Uh, it, it, it ended like that. Very un unsettling also in many, uh, there are still so many things to be explored. And uh, thank you for making this movie, for educating other Northeasterns also about the relevance of very, very important uh, uh, clothes we just we just see but it has so much history behind it. Thank you for the movie uh, One aspect which uh, maybe I missed out because initially I was not there, but uh, in, in your movie um, uh, We we all know that the uh, the whole issue of APSPA, you know that uh, which came to uh, like, you know, I mean all of us were shocked to see that image when we saw the ladies, you know, uh, the image of the ladies uh, who had, uh, you know, like, you know, uh, taken their clothes off in revolt. And uh, I just, it, it's, uh, please uh, pardon me if I'm ignorant about that, but uh, I just want to know what was the impact of, uh, or what was the relevance of Hanik also in that movement, if you can uh, explain. Uh, but uh, I'm actually speechless. Uh, I didn't, I didn't know that a, a small piece of cloth could be uh, such a big topic for a documentary. You know. Thank you for educating us, and thank you for your representation here. Thank you. your wonderful question. Uh, before answering to your question, I would like to thank Rajiv Gandhi University and uh, whosoever has you know, really worked hard to organize this amazing uh, film festival and I'm really, really humbled. I, I uh, express my heartfelt gratitude to all the organizers who have expressed, uh, you know, who organized this borderland narrative, which is quite unique. I never, it seems like <laughs> this festival is meant for me, somewhat like that I felt. I actually talked to my mother, okay, it seems like this festival is for me. So, yeah. Um, uh, this film is a very personal film because I started by asking a question to my mother, you know, I, when my mom said, well, you're not allowed to wash your panic along with your brother's clothes. So when I was really small, okay, I was, how can it be impure? It's such an important attire. I mean, when we wear it, we feel really complete, you know. Like, you know, yeah, I'm the woman, the first time I wore it, that is my man, Mundan. You can see the picture, I'm there in the picture with my mom, I'm sitting on her lap. So, it's something really, really personal, something uh, uh, about an attire which, which actually represents us, okay? So how can it be, you know, considered impure? Now coming back to uh, what you were asking about ASPA, actually uh, I had the footage of the nude protest earlier, but then I kind of thought that, you know, this was kind of distracting everything, the question which, which I was, you know, questioning it, and, and all along I was bringing the question. But then uh, somehow you could actually hear, if you listen to it carefully, the last scene where I'm driving, the audio is of the new protest. Rape us, kill us, Indian army rape us. So if you're asking about the significance of the new protest in terms of honey, honey was imposed on you know, students, student girls. So the people thought that, yeah, honey was imposed on the students, but women still has the autonomy to actually destroy herself as a protest also. They have the autonomy, they have the power to do, to do that also. So that, everybody was like shocked to see this new protest, but then just imagine a woman disrobing herself, not to attract somebody, but as a means of protest, when her body itself, the gesture of disrobing herself becomes an act of protest. So this, I started thinking how Panik became a language of protest, and I thought that this is, happening, but then everybody saw it, but somehow nobody was kind of stitching it up. How, after all, it became, you know, kind of, people started connecting in their consciousness that it became a language which we never knew, but it just happened like that. So these are the series of events which I witnessed in my lifetime, while I grew up, you know, born and brought up in 
uh, Manipur. So I kind of try to you know see how things are happening and I'm trying to analyze it. That's all. Any questions? Anyone? I think it would be really yeah, appreciated if you have questions down the wrong line. Thank you. 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 Thank
I felt like I cannot give all the answers because I'm dealing with taboo subjects, which is ambiguous at all. So how can we just, you know, if it is impure or pure, we have to take sides. It's nothing like that. Probably we have to go beyond this to ambiguity. So I tried like that. So even even exploring the concept of impurity and how it became a language of protest was too much. So I couldn't actually explore the, you know, others, other groups of people. So that is there, yeah. Thank you. Everyone. We can have another question. One last question, please. You might. So, yeah, I just want to ask how have women in your state reacted to this film? Because I think it affects them, their lives, and I think their reaction is so important. I just want to know how they have reacted to your film. Uh, honestly, I haven't released my film in Imphal. <laughs> So Arunachal is much more angry because ah, you are screening a film in Arunachal, you haven't released it back home. I'll be, I'll be screening this film in May, so I don't know what I'm, what's going to happen. Uh, there is going to be a lot of you know, big debate at home also. That's what I'm saying, that I cannot say everything, so I'm saying I'll still keep exploring. So there's so many scholars which are much more educated than me, there are people who know a lot of things about the name. So I can only say that this is the only thing I know so far, so good. So May, let's see uh, you might, if I might get you know hit or something like that. Yeah, thanks, sir. Any questions? Will that be the last questions? If someone is interested, you can take another question and then we get that. Thank you. I just want to acknowledge you. It's it's the first time I'm exposing this kind of fog uh, um, in uh, the documentary films. So I have uh, read about the gender socialization and identity, but this uh, the documentary film gave me a clear picture about how important it is. Not a, uh, it is not just like a piece of cloth, but it's empowered woman, and it truly break all kind of gender uh, binaries. I just want to congratulate you, it's nothing like that. It's crystal clear in your uh, documentary. Thank, thank you, thank you so much. for your wonderful comments. I, I was just thinking, why don't we ask, uh, why is it called bloody? <laughs> because whenever I went, everybody's like, why did you call it bloody funny? You know, why, why, why bloody? <laughs> I'm, quite, I'm uh, questioning myself and I'm going to answer myself. But then I kind of, you know, felt, you know, uh, I thought, you know, just naming the film funny would be, uh, not fair because because I wanted to add the nuances in the film because panic is not just a panic like if I go out I have to carry I we all carry a mother's panic it has its own nuances like for instance you can punish a man by disturbing by trashing you can even pardon a person you can even kill like you know we believe that if you've been trashed of course the men's days are numbered so I wanted to add all the nuances you know even even the anger of a women can be expressed through different gestures gestures in the panic. So I wanted to add certain nuances. That's why I called it Pane. So that's it. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you for your wonderful questions. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Sonia ma'am. And thank you so much, uh, Kenyon ma'am. The next movie we'll be screening is